Hello friends and welcome to Gus McDowell Games. My name is Nick McDowell. Today we're playing the fourth and final mission in the Jersey Blockade campaign mod for Naval War Arctic Circle, titled French Invasion. The first mission in the campaign was French Blockade Jersey, in which British forces monitored a French protest fleet blockading the Jersey port of saint Helier. The second mission in the campaign was France and Britain clash, in which events got out of hand with the sinking of two French uh, patrol vessels off Jersey. And the third mission in the series was Britain sends task force, in which French Rafale squadrons unsuccessfully attacked a British task group, screening the main carrier task force. So as always, we will start with a peek at the French briefing before playing as the United Kingdom. The French press have hailed Operation Fromage and the damage inflicted on the Royal Navy as the first step in restoring our national prestige. They do not yet know the heavy price paid by our brave flyers in the Rafale Squadron. The pressure to resolve the Jersey crisis in France's favour has intensified and the government has decided to remove the root cause of the problem. The President has authorised Operation Baguette, the seizure of the Channel Islands. This decisive act will restore French honour and force the British to beg us for fishing rights. The Channel will be English no more. Two fresh Rafale squadrons have been moved to Le Divisiau. Use them to control the skies over Jersey, then attack any British surface forces in the Channel. Move your Mistral task force into Jersey waters and conduct a coup de main by sending ahead Marines by helicopter to seize Jersey airport in advance of the landing. Vive la République! Okay, so let's start the mission as the United Kingdom and then we shall read the mission briefing. Jersey Blockade Mission 4. Skipper, this will be the biggest naval engagement against France since Trafalgar. Intelligence reports the French are planning to invade Jersey. Date Time Group 2021, May the 23rd at 6.30am. From Admiralty, Admiralty to Task Force Britannia. Situation, tensions over Jersey have increased following the French attack on Task Group Duke and defeat of the French squadron. French losses have not been reported in the media, but pressure has mounted on the French president to act. Intelligence reports the French government has decided to seize Jersey and other Channel Islands and has mobilised naval forces. Her Majesty's government wants to avoid another Falkland Islands. The French invasion must be defeated at sea. French forces cannot land on Jersey and their fleet must not enter UK or Jersey waters. Satellite imagery intelligence indicates the French surface action group comprises the Mistral and four Lafayette class frigates with possible submarine threat. The French have moved two Rafale M squadrons to Land Divisiau as a covering force, and the French uh, may land an advance party of Marines by helicopter from the Mistral to seize key terrain in Jersey ahead of the main landing. Mission Task Force Britannia is to neutralise French forces in order to defeat the invasion of Jersey. Admiralty intends to defeat the invasion by achieving local air superiority and denying enemy use of maritime approaches to Jersey. You will neutralise the enemy air threat from Land Divisiau, secure Jersey Airport with the Royal Marine Detachment, sink the Mistral and neutralise the French Surface Action Group. The French will be denied local air superiority, their capability to land forces will be degraded and the invasion attempt will be defeated. HMS QE2, Defender, Dauntless, Montrose and Somerset are assigned Operational Command to Task Force Britannia. AWACS is available from RAF Waddington if required and a rapier surface-to-air missile battery has been covertly inserted by air in vicinity of Jersey Airport. Use of force is authorised. Do not enter French waters or fire upon French territory. Task Force Britannia is commanded by the CO HMS QE2 and the 2IC is the CO of HMS Defender. Okay, so let's start the mission. And you can see our objectives in the top right of the screen. Sink the Mistral to stop the invasion. Land the Royal Marine Detachment to secure Jersey Airport and also defend Jersey and defend Jersey Airport. Let's zoom in now on the action, and we might start with RAF Waddington, looking north at RAF Waddington at the uh, the rising sun in the north for some reason. So the Boeing E3 Century AWACS, we might, might get that up, put it into a very high flight profile, and give it a movement box, say, somewhere to the west of Portsmouth there. Okay, so here's the E3 Century, a beautiful looking aircraft. And there 
where it is turning around to move into the uh, into its uh, patrol path. And you can see it's already going over 800 kilometers an hour, rising through 1500 feet uh, on its way to the southwest. with RF Waddington in the background. We might now turn on its sensors, APY 1 and 2, and you can see the broad coverage that it has over the entire United Kingdom and um, the operations area uh, for the English Channel. So we've turned on that radar. That will give us good coverage, good situational awareness, as well as recording the events uh, as they occur for subsequent analysis. So now we've got the AWACS en route. Um, let's have a look at our task force. Well, actually, before that, let's uh, identify some of our aircraft. They're currently assigned to Naval Strike, but these four aircraft instead we're going to convert to ferry because they're the aircraft that the helicopters that will take our Royal Marines uh, off to Jersey to secure Jersey Airport. We'll also get the task force on the move. Uh, why not? Yep, top speed, flank speed, and we're moving them to the roughly the southwest so that they can end up north of the Channel Islands. And here the uh, HMS Queen Elizabeth II in the centre of this task force. Now the primary weapon system of the QE2 is of course its air group but it does have phalanx weapons for close-in support. We also have in the group the HMS Montrose which is a Type 23 frigate. It has a 4.5 uh, inch gun, uh, minigun and Seawolf surface-to-air missiles for air defence. It's got eight harpoon missiles which may come in useful later on in the mission as well as stingray torpedoes against any submarine threats. So that's the Montrose. If we look now at the HMS Somerset, uh, also a Type 23 frigate, uh, same class and uh, same loadout as its sister ship. And as we explored in the last episode, these frigates are uh, part of the Duke class frigates and they're all named after different types of Dukes. Uh, next to the HMS Defender, which uh, you'll remember from the first couple of episodes in the series, a 4.5 inch gun. Ehrlich and 30mm cannons and a phalanx for close-end defence as well as a minigun. A uh, very strong in air defence with Aster-15 and Aster-30 surface-to-air missiles. And again, eight harpoon missiles which will come in useful to uh, defeat the French task group. So this is the HMS Defender, a Type 45 destroyer. And the other Type 45 destroyer in our QE2 task force is the HMS Dauntlet. Last correction, HMS Dauntless with a similar loadout uh, to its sister ship, also a Type 45 destroyer. So these two Type 45 destroyers are very strong uh, at air warfare and, and protecting the task group from air attack. Okay, so we might uh, now start to get our combat air patrols launched and what I want to do with these combat air patrols is to launch them, uh, essentially provide a screen ahead of the main force uh, somewhere to the west of Cherbourg and to the northwest of the Channel Islands. Uh, so get them patrolling those areas around there, uh, patrolling Guernsey and um, in between the Channel Islands and the French coast. And so what they'll do is they will obviously um, defend the, the task force against uh, any threat coming out of Land of Viziao from the Rafale Squadron. So we'll get these launched. We'll also get a Grumman Hawkeye up, um, get it at high altitude for its flight profile and put its patrol box around the, uh, the task group. So there we are. The QE2. And when you look here, uh, at, uh, okay, at the um, you can see on the top right hand corner the the aircraft that are that are preparing to launch. So there's a number of aircraft that haven't yet launched and they're in a queue. But you can see there we've got the uh, the E2 Hawkeye has just launched. 
and a beautiful sight as it launches off the Kiwi 2 and flies across the, uh, the front of the task force, commencing its patrol. enable its sensors now. It has, has uh, an excellent sensor uh, package and you can see here in the mini screen that we've already got a, an air contact, hostile air contact detected. Okay so back to the air group and what we'll do now is to put out our anti-submarine warfare screen. So again we want to, to put these uh, in a line um, from uh, north-south roughly from uh, England through to about Cherbourg and these anti-submarine warfare uh, platforms these helicopters will alert us to the presence of any French submarines they effectively provide a sonar screen okay and here we have one of the helicopters already taking off on its anti-submarine warfare mission AW101 HM2 in an ASW profile. And these helicopters are armed with multiple Stingray torpedoes, uh, so if they do detect a submarine threat, they can prosecute that threat independently. So what we've done in the first few minutes uh, is to establish our initial aerial uh, combat air patrol screen. You can see the F-35s on the right, flying off low and fast to get to their combat air patrol. And we're also establishing our anti-submarine warfare screen behind them. Uh, taking a little bit more of a look around the map, this is Her Majesty's Naval Base at Portsmouth. You can see the Isle of Man in the background. They will bear witness to the actions today, the largest naval battle since Trafalgar. Then we have the French port of Cherbourg, which uh, again seems to be a floating port as in previous missions. Not sure what's up with that, but uh, in any case that's Cherbourg. And you can see on the in the far distance the, the English coastline, and it underlines how narrow the channel is at some of its narrower points that you can actually see the other country from, from one side. This is the airbase of Bassera Naval de Landivisiau, and this is the home base for the Rafale squadrons. Uh, they are the air superiority and naval strike assets of the French Navy, and further to the southeast of them, Basse uh, Aero Naval de Landbehu, which hosts the French uh, surveillance aircraft, maritime reconnaissance and surveillance platforms, such as their Dassault Falcon 200 and, uh, and other platforms. On our side, we have the port of saint allier in Jersey, which is the place that started it all. Um, this is the port that the French protest fleet initially intended to blockade and which has triggered the sequence of events in our alternate history campaign that we're showing and the island of Jersey lying behind it there. Uh, off in the distance you can see Jersey Airport. Okay and a closer view of, of Jersey Airport here uh, which is on the western end of, of, uh, of Jersey. And we've also been able to insert 20 Battery Royal Artillery, a ground-based air defence unit which is equipped with uh, Rapier 2 surface-to-air missiles and from the look of it, 64 missiles modelled in the game, so it's quite, uh, quite a number of surface-to-air mis missiles with which to defend Jersey Airport from any French incursions, um, aircraft or helicopters. So that's 20 Battery Royal Artillery. Okay, so we've just had a launch from the F-35s and the battle for air superiority over the channel has begun. Okay, we set them up with a patrol box which is uh, essentially astride the route that the Rafales seem to be taking towards our task force. And my intention with the battle for air superiority is to launch all of my air superiority fighters from the task force 
essentially all at once and have them out for, forming that combat air patrol. Now there are benefits and risks to this strategy. One of the benefits of the strategy is that we can maximize our air power as the uh, French units launch out of Land de Viziau, they'll be attacking us in smaller numbers whereas we'll have um, a much uh, larger number of aircraft against them. The risk that I'm taking however with this strategy is that by launching all the aircraft at once they'll all be decisively engaged around the same time and potentially will all become a bingo fuel and Winchester for weapons all around the same time. So this may lead to a lull in fighting and if I haven't won air superiority by that point it potentially opens a vulnerability in my task group. But I'm taking that risk because I think this is the best way to defeat the Rafale. So here we have one of the French Rafale M uh, aircraft and it's being pursued by an AMRAM missile with an excellent range and we'll see the outcome of this battle. And he's manoeuvring to evade. The sun well over the horizon. Will he succeed? No. And splash the first Rafale of the, of the mission. So that's one for us and we'll see what else is coming towards us. Okay and so in the minimap we can see here we can see um, yeah wave after wave of Rafale fighters launching out of Land of Viziar towards our task force as anticipated and as we form and, and well, here we go in, in the game they haven't positively identified these aircraft so they're tracking two aircraft they're not positively identified although I'll bet they're Rafale um, they've been detected by 20 battery Royal Artillery uh, and you can see their dagger uh, radar that they've detected them with, which has an excellent range. Um, this uh, radar has detected those aircraft, but hasn't identified them. And so they're displayed in the game, essentially, as shadows. So this is the, um, the Marconi dagger radar. And you can see the range there for the ground-based air defense unit based in Jersey. Um, that's an excellent range. Obviously, the range of the surface air missiles itself is much more limited. Uh, being essentially controlling the waters around Jersey, not really much of an incursion into French waters or, or any of the French territory. So if any of the Rafales get close to Jersey, they're in for a nice little surprise. Okay, so we're tracking some more of the Rafale here. And it's not clear whether these are in an air superiority or a naval strike mission profile. Uh, it could be either. Um, but with any luck, our combat air patrol will render the question pointless because we will shoot them down before they get close enough to, to launch. And you can see we've detected the Mistral task force off to the west. Um, a single detection of one ship, so intelligence indicated that there was more than one vessel. We've only detected one so far from the F-35C's radar. Um, not surprising given the radar cross-section of that large vessel um, but a beautiful ship landing helicopter dock and as you can see it's got six locations uh, for landing and takeoff of helicopters and that's essentially what it's designed to do uh, to, to um, launch and recover helicopters from those six slots on the flight deck okay so these aircraft have been picked up by the Dauntless's radar and they are running for their lives from the uh, AMRAMs that have been launched at them. And the AMRAMs have a considerable range. Yep, okay, splash another Rafale. And, and you can see him in the background. And another one. There's another Rafale down. So the early opening salvos of the battle for air superiority over the channel are uh, very positive for us. We've inflicted a number of casualties already and there's another launch um, with, and uh, we may as well give weapon release authorization for these other detections that are coming in uh, we still have a number of AMRAMs in this group and if they expend their AMRAMs relatively soon we can push them back to the Queen Elizabeth to rearm and refuel and there we go down to two AMRAMs at the moment Okay, so they've expended all of their AMRAM missiles, but um, those AMRAMs are still tracking in on the French. And we'll speed up time a little bit, just so we're not uh, 
tracking every single missile in real time. So having a look at the AMRAM, uh, uh, yep, strikes the Rafale. It's another one down. And again, so far no losses on our side, which is uh, an excellent outcome. And uh, it just goes to show the benefit of these BVR or Beyond Visual Range engagements. Okay, this Rafale pops flares, trying to evade, and is successful. This Rafale is trying to evade. Beautiful picture of the Rafale with the sun, but that doesn't help it because it's shot down too. Um, so far, this first wave is not uh, faring very well. And another one shot down. And, and another one over French territory. And another Rafale taken down. And more missiles being launched. You can see this last missile here is, uh, I think it's tracking what's happening up here. Okay, uh, right, so they've expended their AMRAM, so we'll get them to return to base. Uh, okay, and that, that last AMRAM is tracking this aircraft, and yep, that hits it. And of course we'll be tracking the locations of all these um, weapon strikes. Uh, less important to us, of course, if they're over French territory, but if they're over water, uh, we'd want to be making sure there's some kind of air sea rescue effort um, either launched by the French or by us. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, the dictates of humanity do get involved here. Yes, it's a conflict, and yes, you want to knock your adversary's platforms out of the sky. Uh, but uh, there's also um, considerations of humanity involved. So you'd be tracking where these are so you could then later recover the pilots. Another AMRAM tracking in on the Rafale. And you can see the Rafale has got a fairly distinctive profile. Yep, another one shot down. You can see in the background there. And we'll speed up time a little bit. Right, crossing the French coast, narrowly avoiding terrain. Is now tracking on Rafale, pops flares and evades. Okay, he's alive for today. And this Rafale is now turning back in. He's, he's across the French coast. He's coming back in. Will he evade the second AMRAM? And the answer is no. Okay, leaving one Rafale in the sky. Uh, and otherwise... Our efforts at attaining local air superiority seem pretty successful, so we'll launch against against this remaining Rafale. We'll see how we're going with these guys. Yep. They're going fairly well. we'll give them a new movement box. And you can see the AMRAMs have launched, and the Rafale is already moving to, to uh, evade them, to outrun them. Wow, that's a lot of missiles being launched there. We maybe should have changed its rules of engagement. Uh, back to the task force, and we're going to launch now the Tyrannus UCAV uh, unmanned aerial vehicles um, in a very low flight profile, and we'll launch them from our task force to see if they can attack the Mistral group. And this is a bit of a speculative attack, but I think it's worth it. These are unmanned aerial vehicles, so no human lives will be risked at this point. And you can see them here taking off from the QE2. Very impressive looking aircraft. Each of them, as we can see them here, carries four sea skewer missiles. So they are taking off from the task force and running at only 10 meters off the, uh, off the water. This is the future of naval aviation. So they're rolling out at 550 kilometers per hour, 10 meters off the surface of the sea. They've got, between them, they have eight sea skewer. And so the intention be behind using these is they'll launch an attack on the Mistral group, which will uh, give us some situational awareness, may cause casualties, but will certainly persuade the Mistral to use surface to missiles. We've got our last Rafale in the air is shot down, uh, but no, there are more uh, that are launching out of Land of Vizier. Okay, so we've got our F-35s patrolling here, patrolling the Channel Islands, and moving in to engage. 
They've still got four MRAMs left before we withdraw them from the uh, from the battle area. Okay. There goes a weapon launch. And we'll give them lease authorization for this second group of aircraft coming out of Land of Isiao. Two MRAMs left. I want to track what's happening here. I'll speed up time just a little bit to um, give us a sense of what's happening with this missile. Let's have a look at the Rafale. Yeah, it's manoeuvring around terrain quite aggressively, uh, trying to avoid the AMRAM between these mountains. It uh, pops flares and yes, that successfully evades the missile, but there's still one inbound on it. And it's shot down. Okay, so moving to this group here of Rafale. Oop, there's another one. Splash another Rafale. And we've still got some AMRAMs inbound on the remaining two aircraft in this group. Yep, splash, well, splash both of them. Um, okay, and for now the air plot seems clear. Round one to the United Kingdom, uh, we now temporarily at least have some local air superiority over the Channel Islands. So we'll get uh, these F-35s in a patrol box over this. Well, first we'll overfly the island, uh, and then we'll establish a patrol box. So these aircraft, between them have two AMRAMs left for long-range engagements, after which we'll withdraw them to refuel and rearm the QE-2. And so this strategy of pushing forward overwhelming force in the first wave so far is successful. We've managed to splash each of the Rafales coming out of Land of Isiao, accounting essentially for a squadron strength uh, for no losses on our side other than the expenditure of missiles. So, so far so good. And a very picturesque overflight of the island here. Okay, we'll, we'll set them up with a patrol box, but meanwhile going back to the ASW mission, what we'll do is we will uh, drop these helicopters down below 10 metres, stop them. Uh, they've got Selex Galileo 5000 radars, which we won't activate at this stage. They also have ESM. The Orange Reaper, Recall Orange Reaper ESM and the uh, Thompson Sintra flash dipping sonar which is what we will use at this on this occasion so we'll uh, uh, activate and deploy the sonar same with this helicopter here looking back towards the French coast we'll uh, slow it to a halt bring it to within uh, to, to a very low flight profile and activate uh, the sensors activate and deploy and finally this helicopter here, same again. Drop it down low, stop it, and activate 
the sonar. And this will give us our anti-submarine warfare screen ahead of the task group. The task force, I should say. Uh, our unmanned uh, aircrafts are passing the helicopter screen inbound to the Mistral. And this is probably a good point for us to activate the sonar for our task force as well. Uh, make a decision at this stage not to activate any more than the minimum number of radar. Uh, but we will go ahead and activate all of the sonar for the ships in the task force and this will maximize our chance of detecting any French submarines that might be lurking around. Yep. Activate this. Yep, not the radars. And we'll activate the sonars uh, and this is going to be putting out quite a lot of energy into this part of the channel, no doubt confusing the whales. Um, but sad price to be paid. Okay, we've got more Rafales inbound. So the battle for air superiority is not over. This group of F-35s is, is now Winchester, so back to base for them. Uh, but having launched their remaining AMRAMs. Now at this stage, the Royal Marine Detachment and helicopters will still be preparing, but I'm not going to launch them until I'm confident that I've got air superiority. There's no point putting them in helicopters only to be shot down. Okay, tracking this Rafael M, part of a group of four. Oh, well, the missile wasn't after that one after all. It was after this one. Okay. And splash one Rafale. Another missile inbound, however. A beautiful aircraft a silhouetted here against the sun and the it's moving to evade the AMRAM turning into it evasive maneuvers but to no avail and it's shot down as well the remaining two ships in the in the group have also been targeted this uh, plane is is popping flares And this one as well. Okay, and both successfully evaded the AMRAM. So we'll select this group here. They've got three missiles left and we'll um, bring them on course to interdict any aircraft coming out of Land of Viziao. But again, once they've expended their missiles, we'll return them back to the QE2. Speed up time a little bit. missile launch and I suspect that this is round two of the battle for air superiority and this is the second squadron launching out of Land of Viziao. Uh, I suspect that the first squadron uh, was defeated in the first round and this is now the second round we're seeing with these launches. And popping flares. This aircraft also, uh, but this one is shot down, leaving one aircraft up uh, and one AMRAM. And now no AMRAM. So we've been very fortunate. Um, the risk with, with my strategy was that uh, all of our aircraft would expend all of their missiles and or fuel uh, before we, we achieve local air superiority. And, and so far we've been very fortunate in how the battle has played out. We've had no aircraft casualties and whilst we've expended a lot of missiles we've brought down all of the French uh, aircraft that have been launched uh, and we still have uh, planes with missiles in their inventory so we still do have um, a combat air, a viable combat air patrol between us uh, the t in the task force and the French and this aircraft has gone evasive and and is shot down so at the moment the air plot looks clear. I think it's a little premature to declare air victory yet, but you never know. Uh, okay, we've still got uh, a number of minutes until the uh, helicopters are ready to launch. They're still preparing themselves another 25 minutes or so. 
so they'll be ready about quarter to eight okay and there we go we've got we've got more air detections out of lander Viziao. so um, as i suspected the the battle for air supremacy is not quite over yet okay we've got our unmanned aircraft inbound and our f-35s yeah still with a full load out of of amrams so we'll revector these into an intercept course to the west of Jersey and okay and we'll speed up time a bit okay a number of missiles launched And the missiles inbound on these Rafale. It's a group of four. Oop, splash one. Now a group of three. And there's another one going defensive. Yep, he's turning into the missile. But to no avail, he's he's also shot down. Okay, more missiles inbound on the remaining two fighters. And both it looks are going def defensive and turning into the missiles. Splash the third member and the fourth member of that group. Okay, so the French are not having an awful lot of luck in 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 um, in their endeavours to contest air superiority, and most of their fighters are being shot down well to the west of Jersey. We'll speed up time quite a bit now, um, and I'm not seeing any air activity out of Landeviziau, so I'm tentatively calling it that we have local air superiority at the moment. Um, although there may be some airframes still refueling, rearming, who knows. So we're tracking now the, uh, the um, unmanned aerial vehicles that are attacking. And this is the sea skew. As you can see, their range here is we're, we're speeding up time to allow them to close in on the Mistral group. And, uh, yep, they're about, about almost within range. 550 kilometers an hour, 10 meters off the water and eight sea skewer missiles ready to deploy. What we'll get them to do is pop up a little bit, turn on their sensors, and see if we can't paint uh, the Mistral group in slightly more detail than at the moment. At the moment, we're only tracking one uh, vessel. We suspect there's more, so we'll get them to increase their altitude a little bit. And there we have our first weapon launch. And our second, yep, okay, we're detecting more ships so we can target more precisely and that second group of sea skewers will send uh, directly at one of the, um, the the lead ships in the formation. So the first set of four missiles going for the Mistral, the second set of four mis missiles going for one of the frigates. And the thinking there is if we can damage or better yet sink one of the frigates, it just pokes a hole in their air defense. So later on when we launch against them, our coordinated airstrike, uh, it just reduces their capability to knock down the missiles as they come inbound. So you can hear, see here the, the Mistral uh, with its screen of four frigates. Speed up time a little bit to allow the sea skewers to come in. And at this point the Mistral is no doubt detecting the sea skewer and is preparing to launch its own missiles. Uh, its defensive um, countermeasures. Uh, we're not seeing any launches yet, but it might be because we haven't detected them. They're not displaying in the game. So the game will only display for you those things that you detect. If you don't detect the launch, it won't display it, even though it may have occurred. Well, they're getting very close now. So here we go. The first launches that we've detected. What an amazing sight. But will it be successful? And we have a hit on the Aconit. Yep. So this is a Lafayette class uh, frigate, the Aconit F713. And it's been hit by, well, at least one of the Sea Skewer missiles that's come in. 
Um, it's damaged, looks to be on fire, and uh, ideally what this will do will compromise their ability to, to defend uh, the, the French task force and the Mistral. Okay, so we've still got a little while. We'll speed up time until we're ready to launch our Royal Marines at uh, Jersey Airport to secure Jersey Airport. And there's our task force. Looking fantastic. And you can see our helicopters are now getting ready to launch. So, let's bring up the air window. We'll select our helicopters. We had four helicopters here, the three and four. So we'll select them and we'll we want to put them onto Jersey Airport. Okay, so we'll get them into the launch window and we'll select their destination as Jersey Airport and they're launching. You can see them here launching from the Queen Elizabeth. Let's have a look what that looks like from their perspective. Okay, so these are the Lynx Wildcat helicopters. You can see here passing the, uh, the, the destroyers of the task force. And these four helicopters are loaded up with a detachment of Royal Marines and their mission is to secure Jersey Airport uh, to prevent uh, any action or advanced um, action by the French. Of course the airport is also being secured by the surface to air missile battery. I'll speed up time to allow them to get into position and once they are close to Jersey uh, and uh, with inside of their objective we will look to launch our main counter-strike against the Mistral group. And here we have our E2 Hawkeye. We'll just adjust its patrol pattern. You can see the Isle of Man beneath the aircraft. And you can see the terrain uh, that is modelled in the game. And the level of detail. So you got a beautiful sight, E2 Hawkeye. And so we've adjusted its patrol pattern to cover the QE2. back to the QE2. The air plot is looking pretty clear. Okay, so what we're going to do is select the task force and we'll probably go one by one. First to the, or well, something, we'll go to the Montrose and what we want to do is we want to launch our Harpoon missiles against the Mistral task group. So launching. And there they go. We'll move now to the Somerset. Again, Harpoons against the Mistral Group launching. And there they go. Then to the HMS Dauntless. It also has eight Harpoons launching. And the Defender launching its Harpoon missiles. Okay, now what we want to do is to launch our naval strike aircraft. Yep, and we'll send them directly against the Mistral task group. As well as uh, two growlers who will have um, anti-radiation missiles that will target the Mistral task group's radar. As you can see, we still have our full complement of uh, air superiority fighters. We still have an E-2 Hawkeye in reserve and our Tyrannus uh, unmanned aircraft uh, have landed and are refueling and rearming. So we still have this latent capability to strike. We'll speed up time. So the intention with, with uh, launching the missiles and the aircraft simultaneously is to present the French with an overwhelming strike. Uh, okay, we can already see some launches, missile launches from the, the naval strike aircraft. Um, just shows how close the terrain is in the channel that they've launched short, their missiles shortly after themselves launching off the task group. 
uh, and and uh, quite some distance away from the Mistral. So we'll get them to expend all of their ammunition. And the intention, as I, I was saying, is to present the French with an overwhelming number of missiles all at once. And this will overwhelm their ability to track and respond to the missiles and also will overwhelm the the countermeasures on the ships involved, whether it's the uh, targeting radars or sheer ability to launch missiles uh, of their own or to engage their close-in weapon systems against the missiles. So we're using sheer weight of numbers to overwhelm the French task group. An alternative strategy we could employ would be to to uh, launch a succession of attacks and uh, you know a few missiles at a time uh, which would probably not overwhelm the French defences but would certainly cause them to expend their surface air missiles and then once we got to a point where we were comfortable that they'd expended all of their defensive stores uh, then we could launch our, our decisive blow against them so that would be another strategy and certainly if you were looking to conserve your expenditure of ammunition that would probably be a an alternative tactic that you could explore to to attack the Mistral task force in this scenario. Uh, but we're under no such constraint. Uh, we are defending the island of Jersey against a French invasion. And um, so we will expend the maximum amount of ammunition, uh, knowing, of course, that whilst the harpoons, uh, we've expended all of them, the naval strike aircraft can, in fact, return to the QE2 and rearm if our first strike is not entirely successful. Okay, so the Growlers here, and we want them to engage with their anti-radiation missiles. We'll see here we've got our Lynx Wildcats in their ferry mission, and they're ferrying the Royal Marine Detachment to Jersey. So we'll speed up time a little bit until they get within visual range of Jersey Airport. And of course this is one of our mission objectives, is to secure Jersey Airport against any potential French coup de main, and we have succeeded and landing Royal Marine Detachment to secure Jersey Airport. There we go. So congratulations to the Royal Marines. Okay. There's our helicopters who have reached their target location. We've got the surface tank missile batteries beneath them. What we'll do is we'll stop them and reduce their, yep, their low altitude and we'll simply just stop them so they're in a hover and this will be simulating them landing the raw marine detachment um, which obviously is not modeled in the game uh, but let's all just uh, use our imaginations here and they're currently fanning out to their landing and fanning out to secure the the airport against any any air assault Okay, and there's a sight of the, the helicopters overlooking Jersey. France in the background. Moving now to the Mistral task group. Coming to the business end of the scenario. And we've got our various missiles, harpoons, Kongsbergs, uh, and others are inbound on the Mistral task group. Now, our detection at this point, we have lost detection of the frigates and we're only detecting the Mistral. Um, so what we might do is get um, these radars for the um, for the growlers. We might increase their altitude, get their radars going, see if they can detect other ships. And indeed, we've already got a couple of additional detections of frigates uh, in the task group. And um, this just helps to ensure that the missiles will be targeting some of these ships as well as the Mistral. Okay, the Corbett F712 Lafayette class frigate. And it's been detected by, uh, of all people, the uh, 20 battery Royal Artillery in the ground-based air defense. And in the background, you can see the Mistral is, is uh, counter-launching against the incoming missiles. And we'll set it up here because fairly soon some of the frigates should be doing so as well. Some of the missiles are coming in very close. And there we go, first hit on the Mistral. And it looks like it has started a fire which will obviously severely impede any helicopter launch and recovery operations that would be necessary for the French Marines to push their advanced detachment to Jersey Airport, which was part of their plan. You can see further missile launches from the Corvette. 
and uh, obviously and from another frigate that we've detected to the uh, left rear and this is the Surcouf F711 and the Aquanet F713 which was damaged earlier and the Lafayette F710 which is um, the ship after which the class is named and you can see now all of them all ships in the group are launching their missiles so we've um, we're definitely coming to the business end of this mission an overwhelming barrage is hitting the Mistral's hit again more missiles are out uh, but our barrage is not uh, we, yep, it's suffering casualties to our missiles you can see them getting knocked out one by one but we have many missiles still inbound on the French task force and you can see some more of our missiles downed and you can see the benefits here of launching an overwhelming strike because even though they're knocking down many of our missiles others are still getting through yep close in weapon systems engaged and we've sunk the mistral to stop the invasion so as the episode draws to a close our task force and air groups are intact with no casualties uh, or platform losses the Royal Marines have secured Jersey Airport. It looks like two full French Rafale squadrons have been entirely destroyed. The Mistral has been sunk, thus neutralizing the French task force, and the French invasion of Jersey and the Channel Islands has been decisively defeated. Britannia once again rules the waves. So lest you think this was a one-sided affair, I also playtested each of the four episodes from the French perspective to ensure the French objectives were realistic and achievable. Playing this mission from the French perspective, I secured local air superiority, though not supremacy, over the Channel Islands. Uh, my French Marines secured Jersey Airport first, and the mission ended with my depleted Rafale squadrons patrolling the skies over Jersey, while my task force, including a lightly damaged Mistral and a lightly damaged Corvette frigate, just off the port of saint helier ready, readying to offload the remainder of my uh, Force Liberation. So it can be done. Uh, the French can uh, prevail in this mission, but on this occasion they did not do so. As always, thanks for watching. Check out the Jersey Blockade playlist on our channel, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.